Welcome back, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt. Former Vice President Mike Pence joins me now. Good morning, Mr. Vice President. You must be tired. I'm glad you made uh, time for me this morning. (laughs) Good morning, Hugh. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'm a little bit frustrated. Uh, Second anniversary of the collapse of Afghanistan. You're a military dad. You know, there are gold star families all over this country watching and not one word about Afghanistan last night. What, what, What happened to that debate? Uh, it it, uh, it was as frustrating as it uh, was to you. It was to me, to be honest with you, Hugh. I mean, it's it, for us to have passed that uh, that second anniversary. And I, I think when I talked about the failings of President Joe Biden, uh, I, I, I mentioned the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, but we didn't we didn't spend much time there. And I, I think that holding Joe Biden to account for that, explaining uh, the cost there, and uh, and really, I, I was I actually wanted to speak about. Uh, Corporal Humberto Sanchez of Logan's Ford, Indiana, who was one of the 13 who fell, who refused to leave the gate that he was standing post at, uh, even though he was warned that someone had gotten inside the wire, because he said there were there were all women and children in his line. And uh, Karen and I went and and, uh, and prayed uh, and wept when when the, his remains came home. But we, we need to tell that story because I really do think that weakness arouses evil. And so much that's happening on the world stage, uh, whether it's uh, the war raging uh, in Eastern Europe, whether it's uh, whether it's the military provocations of China, whether it's Iran back to its malign activities are are all begin at that disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. I wish we'd spent more time on it. My second major frustration, everybody on that stage genuinely agrees that Dobbs was rightly decided. What comes next is unknowable. Nobody talked about the fact that the Democratic Party is committed to packing the Supreme Court and destroying the rule of law. How does that not come up in a Republican debate? Yeah. yeah well, look, look, elections are about choices, and this is a, this is a primary. And I, frankly, you know, uh, I, I welcome the opportunity to talk not only about my vision, my background, my experience. As, a, as I, I think, with all humility, Hugh, I think I am. Uh, I, I'm the most qualified, I'm the most tested, I'm the most proven conservative that's running for president of the United States in the Republican primary. So, but uh, but uh, look, I, I'm with you. I mean, I, I think uh, the, the, making the point that the uh, the position of the Democratic Party today is to support abortion on demand all the way up uh, to the moment of birth, to use taxpayer funding uh, of abortion uh, at home uh, and abroad. Uh, and I've been a voice for calling them out. I think it's part of the equation of how we continue to win hearts and minds for life is by by articulating we're the party of the sanctity of life. Uh, they're the party of abortion on demand. Now, Mr. Vice President, you've won two one on one debates. You demolish Kamala Harris. You beat Tim Kaine like a rug. Uh, this is not your best format because you, you need a little runway to take off because you're a serious man. What do we do about the rule set? Number one, Hugh Hewitt is king of the universe. Nobody gets a right of reply because that's exploited by people who want to be their name ID to go high and get donors. Uh, that's number one. But what would Mike Pence do if you were setting the rules? Well, look, I, I, look, I'm grateful for Fox last night. I think if I was setting the rules, I'd put Hugh Hewitt back at the table no. uh, asking questions and driving it. You've been there before. Look, I, I uh, this is this is the beginning of a process and um uh, uh, for my part, uh, I, I was just uh, profoundly honored to be on that stage. And uh, uh, I, I was glad to be able to joust with everyone on that stage and make our case, because this is this is such a serious time. And I wanted people to know the reason I'm running for president is because I think this country's in a lot of trouble. And uh, uh, whatever the format is, uh, in the days ahead, we're headed to the Reagan Library in about a month. Uh, we're going we're to step into that breach and we're going to make our case uh, because I really do believe different times call for different leadership. Uh, and, and we're going to work our hearts out to earn the right not only to be a standard bearer for this party, but to defeat Joe Biden uh, and, and be ready on day one to bring this country back. Now, Mr. Vice President, I, I want to press you a bit on this. The live audience interfered with the debate significantly last night. Martha and Brett have a good question set generally, some big gaps that I just mentioned but the live audience just screws it up. Now, I understand there's a reason every campaign wants donors, but do we need that many people cheering and crowding and talk? I mean, people couldn't hear the candidates. Well, 
I, I, I'll let I'll let people judge that we're watching it on television. For for my part, I I, I welcome people in the stadium. I thought that the the there wasn't a bad seat in the house. Uh, I think all of us had our supporters in the crowd, and frankly, there was a lot of universal uh, support for statements that we made, uh, that others made, uh, and and I I love the interaction. Look, we're ultimately uh, we're ultimately taking our case to the American people, and I hope I hope in the debates in the days ahead, uh, whatever the format is, that uh, that we have the Republican voters who are present there, who have the opportunity to react there, uh, and that we have the chance to speak directly to, not just through the television cameras, but but in person. It was a great last, last question, Mr. Uh, Vice President. Uh, Mike Gallagher on this show, Chairman Gallagher, the Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party, said these debates should, be, should pose the commander-in-chief test. In other words, if 9-11 happens, who do you want in the desk? Who passed that test besides yourself last night? You've been there. You've done that. You know what it is. Who else do you think passed that test last night? Well, I, I'd, let, I'd let others be the judge of that, but I, I'm humbled by the fact that you said that we passed that test. You know, I, I really do believe the world's becoming more dangerous by the day. I hardly need to tell Hugh Hewitt that. You understand it. Uh, we, you know, we've both got families uh, that are serving in the uniform of the United States, and this is this is uh, it's not a time for on the job training. It's not a time for a rookie in the White House. Uh, and what I hope to communicate last night, and I'm, I'm humbled that you think on that score that we did, is that I'll be ready day one to build a military fitted to the times and that I'll never hesitate uh, to use American power uh, to uh, defend our interests and defend our allies uh, around the world. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. Uh, uh, with all humility, I believe I'm prepared more than anyone else on that stage to serve as commander in chief uh, and lead this country uh, to peace through strength. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. We'll talk again before the debate at, in Simi Valley. And uh, good luck in bringing up the corporal and the other uh, warriors that we lost and other serious issues in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Hugh. Always good to be with you.